Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast, where every week we want to give you encouragement through different means such as testimonies, dialogues with guests, along with diving into the scriptures and exploring the incredible life transforming truths inside it. So with all that being said, here's another episode for you to tune into and listen to. God bless. Enjoy the episode. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. And today we have a guest, right? And I'm just going to throw it out there and get it out of the way really quickly so we can move on with this dialogue. I'm a Manchester United fan. It, I'm in dangerous waters today because I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a sea surrounded by sharks in the word of Pastor Barry, and he's a Man City fan, right? But do you know what the good thing is? You know when United are going through a dry season right now and, you know, we're, we're winning the Milky Way Cups, which is, it's silverware, I get it. But then you've got a team like Man City who are under so much scrutiny at the moment because what's going to happen, Man City, in the coming 12, maybe the 24 months, they're going to lose all their trophies. They're going to end up in the Conference League and it's going to be amazing. But I say all that to say that, Pastor Barry, thank you for giving up of your time, despite dealing with all the Man City stuff behind the scenes. You are an, It's an honour to have you on this podcast as a guest. How are you doing, my friend? Doing good. I was doing good up until that point, up until the introduction. Um, <laughs> just dropped me in it. You know, I have, I'm not, I've I'm got to keep a straight face yeah. from my reaction to, you know, I can't, I can't show too much emotion here. But, you know, um, but no, seriously, I'm doing good. I'm doing real good, you know. Yeah. Um. And and delighted to jump on here with you today as well. And I I, I watch from afar. I'm from another part of the the country, but I watch from afar what you're doing, and I love what you're doing. And you're 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 reaching out and you're reaching to people with uh, with a message, and I love that. You know. Yeah. So keep going, man. Thank you so much. Um. And yeah, we're gonna dive into it. What I do is a rapid fire round just to kind of settle the maybe the nerves or the lack of nerves or whatever. Are you ready to go? All good. Great. Are you a morning or a night person? morning any particular reason maybe why you're morning or my mind uh i wake and i wake and usually 5 a.m maybe before um my mind can be going from 3 30 4 a.m wow. um I'm, I'm on the go from 5 usually 5 30 at the latest um i'm tired in the evenings i go to bed quite early but i love i love getting up in the morning so yeah all good yeah wow um are you a documentary or a movie guy I do like a movie. I have to say, mm. uh, I, yeah, yeah, I like a movie. I like a movie. I like a conclusion, like a quick conclusion, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what's your favorite meal to have? Oh, see, I, I need to put a plug for Havelis if I'm ever in Cork. Yeah, you know, Havelis is a go-to. Even Casey's is a go-to. But mm. my my favorite home cooked meal. Um, my wife cooks this amazing dish, and it's lemon and chili pork fillet. Yeah. with their own special rice and it's really it's the birthdays anniversaries that's that's what we do you know we cook that up so awesome and off the back of that what's your least favorite meal oh um i'm going to i'm going to attempt to not offend someone if i say this you know i've tried as soon you know like goat meat and stuff and i'm just not a fan okay um, but there's a few things that that i, I struggle with um but yeah most things most things I'll have a go at at least once, you know. Yeah, yeah. I suppose on a lighter note to end out the rapid fire round, I already put you on the chopping board before you even had a chance to speak. But I'm going to be nice. You're a man, Man City fan, and I, I will allow that. Right? It's covered under the blood. Amen. Um, amen. Amen. What's your favorite memory as a Man City fan? Oh well. Oh, I have to say, actually, the the year that United won the treble. Um, at that point, City were sitting down in the second division, um, and they were going into injury time. You know the story of the Champions League with, yeah, uh, with, with Solskjaer and and everything scoring late on. Yeah. Uh, for for City, we needed we needed to win a game, uh, mm. against Jellingham, and we ended up. Paul Dickov scored. We went into injury time. We ended up winning three two. Or no, we do we win penalties. But we we basically we got promoted that year, and it was just I'm 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 an old school fan, you know. I ain't I ain't a blow in or anything else. I've been there when we've been down in the bottom. So everything we have, we're just smiling now at the results and everything else. So yeah. love and light. <laughs> and I suppose I know the rapid fire rounds over, but sure, whatever. Um, how did you become a Man City fan? Was it 
passed down through your family or how did that no. happen? No, there's no no football fans even really in my, in my family. Um, okay. my, my thing was I, I loved actually Italian 90 and the, the Irish team in Italian 90, Jack Charlton. Yeah. And at that point, there were some players and they were some Irish players playing for Man City. It was Niall Quinn and a guy called Terry Phelan mm. uh, and a guy called Alan Kernahan. And there was a few others um, that were kind of coming. It was just a connection to Irish players. Yeah. I liked the team just for whatever reason. And I've never been one for just kind of jumping on the bandwagon, you know, these United and Liverpool fans that just jump on. Mm. I was like, no, it just just to be that a little bit different, you know. Um, so it, it it didn't go well for for a number of years, you know. But um, yeah. there was only a couple of us probably in the school, but there seems to be a few more now. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so. That's, yeah. I, I would I would say it's good news, but it's not good news. You know, it's yeah. it's it's controversial news to say you're a Man City fan. But look, you know what? We'll move swiftly on. And yeah. that's that's a debate for another day, huh? It may be Love an in person debate, you know. Yeah. But uh, Pastor Barry, um, as I've said already, you're a pastor, you know, yes. and you didn't just wake up as a pastor. You didn't wake no. up as a Christian. You know, you didn't get to where you are today without a journey that you've had to journey through with life. So, yeah. because this is the Hope Sessions podcast, um, would you share your testimony with us about what life was like growing up and how mm. the Lord Jesus found you? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um. Yeah. Just. Quick, quick recap. Um, I grew up in a really excellent home, you know, great mom and dad, um, mm. all, all of the usual, um, you know, when you hear people saying about just they had a good, stable upbringing and really I had all of that, you know, um, like every other kid probably struggled a little bit in school, a little bit with with uh, with, with people and body, just the, the normal things that sometimes people go through and kids go through. Yeah. But nothing out of the ordinary. Um, and uh, I was... I had left school. I was struggling actually trying to find work when I left. I went to college initially mm. and did a, a qualification in, uh, in leisure and tourism randomly, yeah. um, but had no idea after I'd finished that where I was going to go or what I was going to do. Tried to apply to maybe 40 jobs, didn't get a reply, didn't get anything. Wow. Struggling a lot with life just in terms of not knowing a way forward. Yeah. Um, and I remember just being 18 years old and I, I really had. I would never have said when I was younger than that, that I struggled with, uh, with, with my mind or with, with any of those things, but there was a period. And I think a, a, a combination of a lot of things, a combination of, of circumstance, a combination of, I think a lack of, um, a lack of hope perhaps, you know, in terms yeah. of practical kind of, you know, as I say, I, just by growing up and hearing all those things that, that Jesus loved me and, and I knew it, but there's a difference between knowing it in your head and really just believing it in your heart you know yeah yeah um and it's a little bit like you know we if we sit in a safe place uh it's easy for us to say things but it's only when the rubber hits the road as the saying goes it's only when trouble comes or the storm comes you really understand what your anchor is and who your anchor is yeah and at 18 year old 18 years old that was what that was where it, it hit the road for me um i had some friends of mine who um uh, and around that time took their own life um, and it, it was a, a point of, um, it was, you know, all the feelings that go through your head, there's a, there's a sense of sadness and a sense of loss, but it's also that sense of, of understanding what were they thinking, you know, how did they get there, what brought them to that, and, and then aligning my, my, my own thoughts, because I thought, well, I didn't, I was struggling in that, and, I, and, and before I knew it, I was down a rabbit hole, really, of, of despair yeah. and depression, really, um, and struggled. Um, and I'm not going to do all the detail of it, but just struggled to the point of where um, I was, I was, I was convinced in my own mind that the only way out was was out, you know, um, and only for the grace of God and a, a really miraculous. Um, I have to say, looking back on it, a really supernatural journey. Yeah. In, in regard to you know going to that place and being in that place and sitting there and just going, this is this is it, and, and thinking, you know. No one's going to care. No one's going to miss me. No one's going to. And I remember just looking and. Do you know when someone says they hear an audible voice? Yeah. And it was like a knock on the window and. Can't say it was an audible voice in that. I didn't, I didn't see the clouds part, but there was yeah. a voice that spoke in my head. I said, but I love you. Wow. And I knew, I knew it was, I knew it was, God was speaking. I knew it was the prayers of a mother that was, it was being answered who would pray yeah. for her children every night, you know, and. Um, and that broke me all the more because initially I thought, well, God, how could you love me here? 
I could love a you know you could love a good version of someone. Yeah. You could love a you could love a version of someone who you like and you know who does things that are good or or things that that help you. But how could you love me when I have even betrayed that? Yeah. And I have broken that because that's where your mind goes. You're thinking that I I I don't have any worth now. I don't have any self worth. But it's it really is the catalyst of so much of what the Lord the journey the Lord has brought me on yeah. is understanding that my self worth and your self worth and everyone who listens to this. Your self worth is not determined by what home you grew up in. It's not yeah. determined by, you know, even what 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 you've learned through the years. It's not, you know, they they have value. Don't get me wrong, they have value, but that doesn't determine your self worth. Yeah. Because if that were the case, only the, the best and the greatest they would be, their worth would be infinitely greater. Yeah. Our worth is determined by something that is outside of us, and our worth is determined by by God Himself and the yeah. fact that He would send Jesus to die on the cross. Yeah, that that's where our worth is determined. That God would. Um, I remember just having this beautiful thought that the value of something is determined by what someone is willing to pay to 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 obtain it. Wow! And I thought of of all of the things that that um, that God could have paid that debt with. He didn't yeah. pay it with monetary. He didn't pay it with ten thousand angels. He it's like when you look around the room, what's the most expensive thing that the only thing that could redeem this person? Yeah. It's Jesus, you know? That's right. Uh, and that gives us infinite worth, gives us infinite value. That's a starting point for everything else. Yeah. You have that truth. You hold that truth that to to God himself, that you are of, that there is value to your life. There's Your life is infinitely more important than you realize. Yeah. Um, there's purpose to your life. You know, those things... And that became, at 18 years old, uh, my prayer was very simple. I was, Lord, wherever you want me to go and whatever you want me to do, um, I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, and that that took me through. I, I got some jobs after that and worked to work my way through to be manager of a shop. Um, God bless me very, very much through that, um, still to this day. Yeah. Still, in fact, talked to two guys this morning who I hadn't seen from from those days and still, you know, some 18 years later, still having a conversation about, um, about those days, you know, and God yeah. blessed that so much. And yeah. I'm so thankful that, that God made a way. I'm so thankful that God gave me opportunities. Um, and I realize again, I heard a quote here in the air. I thought it was beautiful. It said that, um, they realized looking back over their life, that nothing was wasted. No, no experience, no, no skill that was taught or learned. You know, everything that you walk through, every thing had a purpose. Yeah. And every season that you walk through had a purpose, whether you realized it or not in that moment. But nothing has been wasted in my life. Yeah. Um, and God has done infinitely more than I could imagine. So, the journey of how I became a pastor is a, maybe a longer story, but mm. um, I don't know how much how much more you yeah. want to. Uh, yeah, walk away. Feel free. Um, I, I was I was managing that shop, and God really began to unsettle my heart, for want of a better term. I knew mm. that He was calling me to something. You know that, you know when you start to get a knot on your stomach, and you're like, there, there's a not, there's an unsettling. I don't know what you're doing here, and and, I, and I'm one of these people who like to know what I'm doing. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't need a ten year plan, but just I need to know the next part. You know, yeah. Um, and this was unnerving for me because. I didn't know. I thought I'm just not too long married. Um, I have, you know, we've we've built a house. We've all of those things, and I really felt the Lord. Every every verse I turned to was was the Lord was uh, was saying, "I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to, to do something. I'm gonna ask you." And I wrestled with the thought of that because your immediate thought is to the extreme. Yeah. You know, are you gonna send me to, you know, up up a mountain in the Himalayas? Like, are you gonna send me to, you know? The backwater of somewhere, yeah. you know, to be eaten alive by mosquitoes. I, I didn't know where I was, what that meant. Yeah. But the more you, and this is the thing about the mind, and this is why it's so hugely important, is that the battle really is in your mind, you know. Yeah. Um, so much of, you can have, you can have the best will in the world, but if you lose that battle in your mind, you can be dressed for battle and still never take a step into that battle. Yeah. And you need to know the one who directs your steps, that his plans are perfect and That's his right. ways are better than your ways. Um, 
and I wrestled with it for I have to say I wrestled for it for a chunk of eighteen plus months. Wow. Um, which is um my fear, if I'm honest, was I was a young man just married, and my fear was we didn't talk about if this ever happened, we didn't talk and and that fear and all of these irrational things come to your mind, you know, you know, how how am I gonna pay my mortgage, you know? Yeah. Um how am I gonna how am I gonna do the and, and we 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 make all these different things. So I find myself uh I, I never ever forget it. I remember having a conversation with someone and in the conversation uh knowing knowing that I just had to trust the Lord with it. Yeah. And I was sitting like this was a fact and I was sitting up at night. I couldn't get to sleep at night with it. I what I was I couldn't eat properly. It was just it was weighing on me. And I thought I, I don't want to be I don't want to just go to someone and let their words influence it. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Which is you know advice is good, but I didn't want someone else's words to be my decision, you know. Yeah. I, I, I believed that I needed um to hear from the Lord directly as well. Mm. Uh, so I remember sitting 2 a.m. on my dining room at home and just crying out, said, Lord, whatever it is, I'll do it. Very simple. Whatever it is, wherever it is, I'll do it. Being completely prepared for, you know, at this point, I'm prepared for for China. I'm prepared for wherever that is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I didn't understand, what I didn't realize was that it was way closer to home. Mm. And I had started going to the church that, that I'm now pastor of some uh, probably 10 years previously. Yeah. I never for a moment put those two things in my mind because the pastor who had been there was pastor for 31 years wow. at that point. Um, so you got to understand that here's me on a, I think it was the early hours of a Friday morning sitting at my table and saying, Lord, whatever it is, the pastor simultaneously on that Sunday morning got up and said, he says, before I share God's word, he says, I have something I need to share with the church. And I'm as interested as everyone else as to what that might mean. Yeah. Uh, and he said, um, the Lord has been speaking to me for some time. And he says, he's asked me to step back from being the pastor. Um, but it's okay because I believe that he's been speaking and leading the person who's going to uh, come forward as the next pastor of the church. And I'm looking around like everyone else, kind of going, who, who is this, you know? Yeah. And then it suddenly hits me. Oh, no. This, this, oh, oh, you're kidding. And I, I didn't want to draw attention to my expression. I'm yeah. like, you know, like eyes glazed forward. Uh, I don't know what this means. I don't know. And I thought this, even now, this can't, this is, no, this can't be it. Yeah. So the meeting ends and the pastor comes over with one of the elders and sits down beside him and says, can we have a talk? And because uh, I could hear the murmurs of other people going, I wonder who it is. I wonder, I wonder who yeah. he's talking about, you know? And the pastor comes over and he says, has the Lord been saying anything to you? And I says, and, and even to blanket, I was like, you know, you know, Lord's always good. Lord's always sharing something and I need to go. Yeah. And I, I, <laughs> I, I left, you know, it. Um, and uh, he, he came to visit me the next day and uh, we had a conversation and um, I said, this is what I've been wrestling with. He says, yeah, I know. He says, the Lord told me this. And he didn't tell me this two years later, but some four or five years previous to this, the Lord had put on his heart. He showed me in his Bible where he had wrote the date and he had underlined the, the scripture. Yeah. And he said that the Lord had told him that one day I would be the pastor of the church. Wow. And I was never, I'd never preached in the church. I'd never or even know if I'd spoke publicly at that point in any capacity. Yeah. But the Lord had put it on his heart. And most, I have to say, probably the most godly man I've ever come across in my entire uh, walk. Um, oh. And the grace it takes to be able to say, I believe this is of God, you know. Mm. Um, and from there started the started the journey, and that was uh, I, I became pastor on the twentieth of December two thousand and five, wow. which just just past eighteen years. Uh, at end of December, I'm in my nineteenth year here. Wow, um, which is phenomenal. So, yeah, yeah it's not without uh, you 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 know it. It's it, when the Lord calls you. It's not without trials. Not without, but. The beauty of it is, is his faithfulness and the That's beauty right. of it is, is his presence. Um, and it's, you know what, it's like the, I often think it's like Noah and the ark. Mm. Um, I think there's times the Bible speaks about that God sealed up or closed the ark. Yeah. And then the waters rose. And sometimes we have this picture of this beautiful, just this ark, just serenely, just sitting there on water and slowly rising. Yeah. 
And then you realize that that deluge of water in 40 days would have been catastrophic and monumental and huge waves. Yeah. But the reality of it is no one fell out. Yeah. And I, I think sometimes we walk like that. I think when we realize that there's times where we walk through and the storms come and the troubles come mm. and we think, oh, it's all going to capsize, but it doesn't because yeah. he's setting it up. Amen. And because we're safe and we're secure and he keeps us. Yeah. Um, and to me, I'm, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I like simple pleasures. I like, um, and I just love the word. I love the simplicity of the word. I love yeah. the complexity of it, but I love the simplicity yeah. of this message and that, that God is still able to reach and touch anyone. Yeah. That's the beauty of this word, you know? Amen. So yeah, that's my story, man. I've, lo I've loved it because I always find it incredible just to see the hand of God being not only on someone, but being played out in their lives from you grew up in a different place than I did. I grew up in East London, which is quite rough at the moment. That's where a lot of the, like, you know, you think of the top boy TV series yeah. and stuff like that. That's where my family grew up for the first seven or eight years of my life. And then I moved to Ireland and lived in a place called Wexford, which is the yeah. sunny Southeast, but it rains most of the time, kind of a contradictory yeah. term, but um, I'd, I'm so refreshed to know that because every time you preach uh, Pastor Barry, I always, feel a stirring in my heart of encouragement from the reality of honesty in your own life, as well as the honesty of the text of scripture being compiled together. And uh, that's the one thing I really admire about you is that it's, this is me and this is the scriptures and, and this is the God that we serve, you know, yeah, it's yeah. the simplicity of the, of the message, you know, yeah. and I've yeah. asked you to come on today to, I suppose, have a bit of a brief dialogue on the topic of mental health. And it's a massive topic. I think everyone knows about it. You know, but not a lot of people speak about it because there's a fear of maybe not knowing how to speak or what to say or how can I comfort someone or maybe they're not even aware that they may have dealt with mental health issues themselves. People yeah. to me may think like it's like a dirty word, kind of, you know, sure. people yeah. think mental health is all oh, those people in the psychiatric wards and they're locked away and they've got a straight jacket on them. But mental health covers a wide variety sure. of things, depression, anxiety, loneliness, fears, mm -hmm. like just a lot of stuff that cripples mm -hmm. each and every one of us in our lives in, in different ways, at different weeks, with different challenges that arise. Mm -hmm. And I remember for me, when I when I was growing up, I was in school in, in Wexford Vocational College, loved my time in school only because I went in there to annoy the teachers and have fun with the lads in metal work where I was throwing tools around the room and well, using the tools the way I shouldn't have been using them, but hey, the Lord knows, and he yeah. he used it for his glory in some way, shape, or form, you know? But I remember when I was in school, I wasn't a lonely kid. I was yeah. kind of a, a bipolar kid. You know, mm -hmm. some days I go into school and I was everyone's best friend and I was happy chappy. Other days I just wake up in bad mood, not in the mood for anyone in the world. And then there were yeah. some days where I was just, just wake up feeling lonely, a, a real mm -hmm. a, a loneliness yeah. that I carried around with me. So because of that, it crippled me in a lot of my friendships. So mm. I didn't have loads of friends. I had a few. Mm. When I say a few, I think it was four in, in to five in total, sorry, five. And mm. we kind of just stuck together. We played sports together. We had lunch together. We sat at the same kind of area in the classroom. And, I just, you know, we get along very well, hang out, play sports and stuff. And unfortunately, out of those five people that I was friends with, four of them successfully committed suicide in the space of four years. Wow. And when that all happened, I'm, I kid you not, I became so numb yeah. for a number of years to the point where I couldn't open up to my parents, my friends, my mm -hmm. school teachers. My school, at the, at the school I was in, they used to bring these specialists in. They were kind of doing like, yeah. they would take me out of class for maybe two or three classes a week, which I thought was great because I didn't have to do homework when I wasn't in the class. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get it. They were getting me to do all these tests and asking me like a lot of very personal questions. And I didn't understand at the time because I just I became so numb to the reality that these people who I thought were going to be in my life for the rest of my life are now gone. Yeah. And I don't have anyone that I can talk to, that I can share the common interest in. And I, I remember it. That was the first time where I dealt with mental health and yeah. um, depression in a way that I didn't think existed. Yeah. There was a heaviness on my head that I carried around. And every time someone wanted to ask me personal questions, it was just like a headache. I was like, no, no, I can't. I was always kind of shifting the focus elsewhere. Yeah. Do you know, and it's, I suppose, is it something that you, you may, may have had a similar experience with Pastor Barry, you know, in, with the terms of mental health? Have you 
do you remember your first time that maybe you came into the I suppose had an experience where you're like oh right this is this is what it is yeah I mean I, I kind of I kind of touched on it earlier you know I mean yeah. I think just just to quantify you know even you know and, and I don't speak from a you know I don't speak from medical practice kind of side of things I don't speak yeah. from you know you know I, I don't have degrees in, in in any of those areas sure but I I work with people every day I work with people from from every spectrum of uh, everything from from people who have great homes and great family lives all the way through to to people who are on are in destruction mode yeah um, people who whose lives we, we had a food share on today and we had you know a, a bunch of families through a bunch of individuals through today everything every kind of addiction under the sun uh, so we, we work all day we yeah. work most days should i say uh, in these areas with with people who are struggling on different things and mental health and some we all have mental health yeah. Uh, the difference is you can have good mental health and you can have poor mental health. That's right. Um, oh, so we all we all have we all have that capacity in some ways because our minds are are really the engine room for um for 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 the, the our actions and the mind is, is is the battleground for a lot of the things that we face. Yeah. So for me, um, I, I before I was eighteen, before that 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 incident that took place with with my friends, mm. um. Before that, I you know anyone can have a bad day. That's as much as I would have said I had before that. Yeah. Um. I, you know, I, I struggled a little bit in school. I was never. I was quite introvert in school. So, again, struggled to kind of make close friends. My my closest friend was a uh, was a, a cousin of mine who, coincidentally, is actually a pastor in Dublin now as well. Mm. Um. Uh, shout out to Gareth Carr, um, yeah. up in Abbey Street. But um. But yeah, he was he was my closest friend and through. And even there, you you know, you, you have friends, but it, it's how close you let people into your life, you know. Yeah. And that's what makes it more difficult is when you open yourself um, to people, yeah. And you trust people, and and then something happens in that uh, that it feels like you're spiraling out of control. Mm. And I feel that's where, for me, that's what began. To, it's like I began to unravel. The control just seemed to go. Yeah. Um. And and a cloudiness is probably a good way to put it. That sense of a, a weariness, a sense of not finding joy in anything, no matter what it was. Yeah. Um. And there are times, and I think it's something that even, if I'm honest, even in Christian circles, um, people have different views and different opinions, and I won't go down the the road of everyone's different opinion and different idea. Yeah, but I realize that we're not immune to things either. Yeah. Um. But I do believe, if I'm honest, I do believe there's a way that we can walk in victory. Yeah. And I do believe there's a way that we can walk in spite of things, and we can walk. I'm not. Uh, I'm not burdened by those things that I once was burdened with. Yeah. I don't feel crippled by those things, and you'll say the same. Yeah. You're not the same guy that you were coming out of school. That's right. And really, the more you expose yourself to the lord and 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 his word and the more that you open yourself to him mm. you realize that he's he's never going to he's never going to forsake you yeah he's never going to leave your life permanently right. um, and that changes a lot of things you know so that was my first real i would say deepest encounter of of all of that you know yeah that was it so yeah that's thank you for sharing that because i, I find you know you know you go through something right and then you realize someone else went through it. Mm. Suddenly, whether you have a relationship with that person or not, it makes you feel like you're not alone. Yeah, yeah. It's and I know there's eight billion people in the world, and you know everyone has different yeah. fates and so on. But it's so encouraging to know that someone I know, which is you, has in some way, shape, or form a similar aspect to my story as well. Yeah. Do you know, and um, because I do find that with the topic, um, you know, you ask someone how are you doing, and in in the church circle, it's usually not to beat on the church because I'm a part of the church. I love the church, but sometimes we're very good at this language called Christianese. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. How are you? God is good. God is on the throne. Oh no, I yeah. I know that he's 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 he hasn't moved. He's he's seated. How are yeah. you doing? You know, and it's yeah. it can be kind of people are afraid to open up because I, I wonder yeah. is it we feel that we're going to be shamed, embarrassed, looked mm -hmm. at differently when the reality is when we open up to the Lord, it's totally different. We're embraced, loved, welcomed, yeah. Yeah. heard, seen, valued. Do you know, and it's, I suppose, maybe like, how would I say this? So how is it 
that we have allowed the topic of mental health maybe to become so taboo to the point where it's it's like you just put it under the carpet it's like yeah not for today yeah. when yeah. we walk over it we we walk around it but we don't walk through it or or tackle it head on you know yeah uh, here here's let, let me quantify it i guess you, you said something very uh very important there you said that for years that you felt or even for a long time you felt like you were the only one who walked through these things yeah and one of the one of the one of the biggest ploys, and, and that's that's one of the biggest things how the enemy comes against your mind is to make yeah. you think that you're alone. And if you're alone, then you have no one to turn to, and you have no one to ask, and you have no. One. And part of that is it, it's really it, it is a tactic of the enemy to isolate and to separate yeah. um, the sheep. Um, but here's here's the thing, for me, um, I think there I think there's there's seasons you walk through, there's difficult moments, there's difficult times, there's, you know, you, you have a, maybe you, you lose someone in your family, maybe you, yeah. maybe you're struggling in your workplace, maybe you're, you're struggling in different things. And I, I think it's an Irish thing, if I'm mm. honest, uh, where the, the Irish are great at, you know, they love, I mean, the most Irish word you could say is grand. Yeah. It's grand. Yeah. You know, we're fine. You know, the house is burning behind you and the, the winds are screaming and, you know, when the car has been stolen and you're like, oh, grand, you know, I'm fine. You know, yeah. I've had people and I know their story. I know their life. And you would see them and how's things grand. Mm. Well, it's not grand, you know. Um, and I think it comes down sometimes to, I think when you talk about things, um, it's there's a wisdom attached in who you talk to about things. That's right. There's a wisdom attached. And it's like, it's like I, I don't go up to everyone. Uh, that I meet in the street and say, well, today I feel like, yeah. you know, or, you know, or, or I meet someone who come in and today I'm going through, mm. there's a wisdom in, and we don't wear everything on our sleeves to everyone. Yeah. But there is a wisdom in being able to have that person or those people that can be a confidant or can be someone. I have a, I have a close friend who uh, he's one of those chaps and my conversation, you know, we can go, we can go a week without, much of a conversation sometimes but if i send him a message and say will you pray for me mm. he will stop on that moment whatever he's doing he will close the door and whatever he's at and he will begin to pray yeah and it doesn't need to be any more than but he knows enough in that you, you can be wrestling with something you can be trying to find an answer for something or you can just be walking through something in that moment and yeah. to know that someone is with you and that you are not on your own to know that someone can pray for you, um, it, it's the most encouraging thing. Mm. Um, I think we're not we're not great in Ireland, if I'm honest. We're not great even as Christians, and uh, and I hold my hands up to that as well. We're not we're not great at, at opening up because that's just part of the Irish nature. I think yeah. I think that's a big part of it. Um, we don't want to talk about things. We're we're very content to to live through things and endure things rather than. Yeah. Um, but the Bible speaks about it speaks about a life more abundant, and mm. I, I have a sense that we're called to a place of where we enjoy more than endure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think we're called to a place of where we can live free rather than live, you know, bound or burdened. Um, you know, I like I I love the I love even First Peter. It says that you, we cast our cares upon Him because He cares for us. Yeah, and and I I love the fact that. When you open up and you cast your cares on him, mm. even in a conversation with someone, yeah. there is a casting off and there is a laying down and there is an unburdening and there is a letting go to some measure. But even more so when you let go and lay it all before him, yeah. uh, you know, truly. And I, I love that, that he, he cares for you. That, mm. that really just emboldens the whole thing. It just, it just puts it all beautifully together. He, you can do that because he cares for you. Yeah. You can come to me. He's not going, you know what, Jerry, I'm, I heard from you yesterday and I'm, I'm sick of hearing from you or I'm busy or I'm, yeah. you know, that's never the case with him, you know? Yeah. And um, more than we realize, we need to get better at it. We definitely need to get better at it. Yeah. Um, and we need to get better at sometimes what we do is it's become much to our, it's not not good, but sometimes always say to someone, "I'll pray for you." Mm. But in reality, you know, like that's a thing in Christians. I'll pray for you, 
but the thought's gone in a moment, you know. And yeah. I think sometimes if we just go, you know what, can I pray with you now? That's right. Yeah, can, that's right. Can, can we sit together for a moment? You know, mm -hmm. I don't need to know your whole story. I don't need, need to know what you're walking through, but mm -hmm. I don't want to just calm you off. Sure. Can we pray together now? Yeah. And when you do that, you're actually, um, you're making not just a connection with someone, but you're actually, you're showing them that you care. Yeah. And you're showing them that more than you care and that there is one in heaven who cares even greater for you. So that's right. Um, and I think there's so much to draw from, you know, you touched on scripture, you know, and, and it is like, I think one of the most, well, if you were to think of a book in the Bible that, that talks about, or that you see the reality of someone's mental health, it would have to be David in the Psalms. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one Psalm, he is on the mountaintop experience and his hands are lifted. The very yeah. next Psalm, he feels like he's in a bottomless pit where he doesn't see any way out. And yet what I love about it is, because obviously I've read the Psalms quite a bit because I enjoy poetry. So it's naturally one of my favorite books to read, but there's something I always love about David. It's that it's that, like some of his Psalms are like Psalms of transition, you know, like they start off at a place where he's so negative. Then by the end of the Psalm, his countenance has changed because yeah. his, his, his perspective on the situation has now gone to his eyes being on the Lord, you know, mm -hmm focusing on the Lord and that's yeah. really changed how he has maybe journeyed through a lot of stuff. And I think that's an example for us instead of being so fixated on maybe the reality of our depression, anxiety and stuff, it's, it's to learn to turn our, turn our face North rather than be so fixated on, yeah. on me, myself and I in the four walls of my room or, mm -hmm. you know, on, on your phone, you're seeing everyone else. Yeah. Like the reality is social media, everyone posts their, their best life. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, absolutely. They, they don't post the days where they're feeling depressed, where maybe they're cutting themselves or whatever. I don't want to get too deep into it, but that's the yeah. reality. No one posts those pictures because mm -hmm. the reality is no one wants to see those pictures. Everyone goes on social media to kind of escape the reality of life for a bit, for a brief moment. Yeah. Do you know, yeah. and that that's what it's become for a lot of us. I think it's just, as you said, Irish, we're just, we're yeah. terrible at, at sitting down and having a conversation, but I'm so yeah. thankful for myself. Um, my brother, Danny, who's my best yeah. friend in the whole world and has been because yeah. he introduced me to the Lord Jesus. And ever since that day, we have been a, such a tight knit relationship. He literally lives five minutes down the road from me. Mm -hmm. So I, the beauty I have is I'll text him and, hey, Dan, can we go for a coffee? Mm -hmm. And and instantly he knows what that means. He doesn't have to read into the text. He's just, OK, yeah, let's talk. And yeah. you feel yeah. the, like I know it's that we talk to the Lord. Obviously, I get that. But, you know, it helps so much to know that you have someone that you love and trust yeah. in physical flesh that they will yeah. hear you and not necessarily preach, but just be a listening ear. Like I always say to people that Job had the best friends in the world until they opened their mouth. That's right. That's right. That the ministry of presence can really help people. And I suppose to dive into that because, like, there is practical ways to help with mental health, you know away yeah. from social media away from maybe putting it under the carpet you know and mm -hmm. i think is there any maybe any tips is there something that maybe you've learned from your journey that you could impart to our listeners that may help them as they're walking through their the variety of maybe their difficult mental health situations that they're experiencing yeah do, do you know what you you touched on something it's i think you, you said it, you, you put it along the lines of about about being real. You know, no one wants to, no one wants to, um, no one wants to be honest online. No one wants to, you know. I'll tell you a funny story actually. Um, to yeah. just to, just to kind of, um, we went on holiday some years ago. A couple of myself, my wife, and our and our daughter, and, and another couple and their son. Yeah. And we went on holidays. We went to Portugal. We hired some cars one day, and we were driving through the hills in a in a I'd say a little village. Um, I'd say Lagos. Yeah. And we've seen this sign this uh, for an autodromo, which in my broken Portuguese was autodrome, mm. <laughs> which is like some kind of stadium of some sort. So we drove up this big mad motorway and we, we drove around the corner. And the next thing, there's this beautiful, massive, big stadium that's just been built in the middle of nowhere, 100,000 seater stadium. Yeah. And they had built it for, um, for, for the port. It actually has now used for the Portuguese Grand Prix. For Formula oh, One, yeah, but they had, they had built this stadium, hadn't even. I think at that day they were testing bikes on it, just um, and just up from that they had this other, they had this smaller stadium that they used for the natural national Portuguese karting championships. 
Mm. Uh, so there was nobody about, and we went up, and this beautiful, just everything, just so picturesque. And we paid we paid our money to go on the carts, and we went on the carts, and there was only one other person there, and it was this girl. And this is why I'm telling you this story. This girl was there. She rolled up in this really fancy car, and she stands. She's taking selfies of herself, you know, yeah. you know, and she's got her Gucci handbag and her, you know, and you can just, you can imagine that, you know, a day at the track, you know, kind of, yeah, you know, caption, kind of photo caption, you know, the stadium in the background and she goes on and we're doing the carts and there's one of the girls with us who has never drove a cart was zooming past her mm. and this little girl, she was, you know, or this woman, she was, you know, she was doing her carts and, but what you could do and what we didn't realize, you could do a track experience day in the main, in the main track. Mm. And because it was the other guy's birthday his wife said if you want to do the track experience let that be your birthday present yeah so he got an experience to sit on and then to drive a porsche cayman s around this track flat wow. out right so we went across went into the pit lane and we went in and the guy says this is what we're going to do you're going to sit on with our race driver he's going to harness you in like this pit street they're doing 170 down the pit street mm. um, and he says you're going to sit on i'm going to walk you through the corners where you go in and then you get two laps you get a flying lap and then you get one more lap hmm. so i'm like this is so we're sitting watching and we're we're watching my friend ian as he goes on the girl has also booked this experience so she's outside now and she's like you know she's taking selfies and track yeah, day and yeah, yeah. all of this stuff and i'm i'm not joking you know the makeup's perfect and the hair's perfect and the clothes and she's just but she's on her own doing all of this and you know she's telling the story to the world yeah yeah so my friend, he goes and he does his flying laps and he is buzzing. He comes back off it. He is just so excited. He's like, that was unreal. Um, and we waited just to see the the other one go around with the girl on. And all that she, her experience was to sit on in the car whilst the guy drove very fast around the track for two laps. Yeah. He came back into the thing and in Portuguese, he called to the other guy in the room. He said, basically, can you come help me? Hmm. And he went over and he opened the door and the girl was slumped in the seat like this, tear stained, like literally just her makeup was was like this. Wow. Uh, just, she just had completely just melted under, because of the, the speeds. Hmm. And she was so scared, you know, because of the speeds. And he's like, get her. And they literally carried her in. They physically carried her, you know, one had hands and one had feet, set her on a chair and got her a glass of water. And she sat there slumped in the chair. And this was my first thought, apart from poor girl. My first thought was, I wonder, does she need a photo taken? Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, in a few moments, she had went from having a great day at the track. But in reality, this is what the great day on the track ended up being. Wow. She was so afraid. She yeah. was, you know, the speed was just too much. All of those things. And this is the thing about it. We fake things so well and we live behind and it's important, more important than you realize to be real. Yeah. Who you are on Monday is the same as you are on Sunday. Yeah. Whether you meet me on a Wednesday or on a Friday or on a Sunday morning, you're going to get the same version of me. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So I'm not one thing to 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 church people and one thing to the world. That's I'm right. not one thing at home and one thing different than the church. Yeah. I am that person no matter where I am. And when you begin to understand that that's who you're supposed to be, uh, and, and again, a lot of it is finding identity. A lot of it is trying to find uh, um, who you are and what you're supposed to do in this life and who, what you're supposed to do in this world. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the biggest struggle, especially for young people, because that pressure is so huge now. You know, we we all ask questions of, you know, where am I from? Why am I here? How do I live? Where am I going? That's right. And we try to figure out those things. And we're living in a society now that has... If you can imagine those, even those things has been at one end of that rope is where am I from mm. and where am I going? Yeah. We've taught a generation of young people now that, well, you're not really from anything. You're a product of, you're a copy of a copy of a copy. You're really just part of an even evolutionary kind of thing. You're yeah. really of no value, no intrinsic worth. So it's you're true. really from nothing. And we're teaching a generation in our schools and everything that there's nothing beyond this. Yeah, that there is no heaven, there's no God, there's nothing, there's no reference point, there's no purpose. So if you cut the two ends of that rope, as it were, what you're left with in the middle is, why am I here and how do I live? Yeah. And you look at every single young person you meet on the street and they are trying to answer those two questions. Yeah. Why am I here and how do I live? Yeah. Every decision they, 
and and that's why you find in this city and this city is is like so many other cities and towns and villages throughout ireland you have a bunch of young people who at 14 and 15 and 16 have experienced way too many things mm. have indulged in things have no knowledge have no experience of of life and not finding the answers yeah. because they don't know that there is a god in heaven they don't know that there is a, a worth that is greater than just a life to be burned out and live young and and die young yeah and you have a whole generation of young people who this is this is what i would say if i was to be asked what is something that you should do is is find out the worth that you have in christ yeah find out the worth of that, that god loved you enough to redeem you and to ransom your soul that's your starting point for everything that you do in life mm. i know i am in and of myself i don't have money in the bank i don't have any of those things but i know my worth is in him yeah that's one part of it the second mm. part in a, in, a, in a practical sense if you are in a relationship with anyone you know what be in relationship be present in that relationship be mm. uh, engaged in that relationship you know I, I often say i didn't marry my wife you know and then just you know on, on the afternoon of her wedding said you know what i'll come back and visit you a few months time or I'll, I'll come if i need something i'll give you a call or yeah. that's not relationship relationship is walking with someone yeah walking with someone every day and you want to know who you are you want to know why you're here you want to know how to live mm. you want to know what's beyond this then begin to walk with him yeah and wow. when you begin to walk with him suddenly there's purpose comes to your life and when you begin to do the things that are revealed to you to do that you 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 love your neighbor you love your yeah. brother you you begin to serve the needs of those around you suddenly purpose comes and you begin to understand the purpose it's That's not right. all about and I, I hasten to say it's not all about you yeah we understand that it's love the lord your god with all your heart your soul your mind your strength and love your neighbor as yourself yeah that's the greatest commandment and mm -hmm. suddenly when we understand that our purpose is to love him and to love others in that we find purpose in that we find meaning in that we understand that we are made for a greater purpose yeah than we realize yeah and, and in those things and the service of those things you will find man you'll find your life will go on a roller coaster of of of, of excitement and a thrill ride knowing that that god is if god is with you who can be against you mm, that's right. should the enemy camp against you should he come against you what can he take from you what can he do to you yeah. nothing that's greater right. is he who is in you than he who is in the world amen so, yeah um and get some good sleep some good you know all of, all of the th they're practical things man yeah you know yeah you know sometimes even just the simple things see if you sit up all night and you sit on a on a headset or you sit on a you're going to wake in the next day and your mind's going to be distracted you're not going to have any sleep and you're 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 not going to be who you're supposed to be that's right be disciplined yeah. in the things you need to be disciplined in yeah not to restrict but for the purposes of your benefits you know yeah and you know you said something there that i was just thinking about it how the enemy what the enemy would want for us when we deal with mental health issues no matter what they may be is that his main goal is to isolate us 100 percent, yeah and then when he isolates you he will have a field day with your mind yeah yeah pull you from community pull you from fellowship yeah. pull you from friendships yeah. And there's something I've learned, I put it into practice in my life, maybe about three years ago. I think it was just before COVID. There are days that I wake up and I don't feel like going to church. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I did. You know, no, you wake no, up no. on the wrong side of the bed and it's those days yeah. that it's a fight for me to get to the presence of God, to get around believers. And yeah. I will say this, and not even to say this because it's a Christian podcast, people who know me know that what I'm saying is true. Mm -hmm. Those days where I push beyond my feelings, beyond my yeah. difficult circumstances, sometimes yeah. I'll go to church and I try to avoid people. I'm not in the mood to talk. I just mm -hmm. let me let me listen to the worship song. I can't worship today, but just let the worship minister to me. Yeah. Every time that I've made those decisions, the Lord has always showed up. May yeah. it be through a song, a yeah. scripture, the message, or simply just being in his presence. It makes my problem seem so small and that my God gets elevated to his rightful position as being the almighty one. Yeah. You know? And I'm always saying it to people like, you know, there's, there's like, I'm a sports guy. 
Mm-hmm. So when United are in the Champions League, it's so easy for me to say, ah, oh, yeah, midweek service, I'll give you the, I'll give you a skip this week, Man United are playing. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm like, well, I'm just going to chill at home and my, my thoughts then, am I, you know? Yeah. So it's always, there's days there where it's a fight to get to the presence of God, but never yeah. once in those days has he failed to, to sure. show up, to remind me that I'm not alone, that I may be on my own, but I'm not alone, that he's present there. That, then, I st- then I start to count my blessings, mm-hmm. literally. The yeah. pastors that I have in my life, my friends, my family, my job, my neighbors, you know, mm-hmm. and there's so many blessings that outweigh the non-blessings in my life, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and that's what the one thing I want to say to people as well, um, the importance of Christian community, mm-hmm. being around brothers and sisters in the Lord, those who are walking the same journey as you and may have similar battles to you but they may not just be vocalized or realized you know and i have i have a t-shirt actually not that i'm i'm not here to promote my t-shirt as well but there's a quote that i writ for it and i think it's actually uh, relevant for this podcast episode i'm going to read it it says the following even on our darkest and most hopeless days when we sit in empty houses full of broken and crushed dreams when we fight demons of past failures who we really are remains unchanged We are forgiven. We are those bought back. We are those who are embraced by a father who not for a single moment, even on our worst days, will ever stop loving us. Yeah, lovely. And that is the truth. As we sit here right now and and you feel like you're the only person going through it, that's the biggest lie from the enemy. And the enemy would want you thinking that. Yeah, 100%. Um, My, just to... I grew up. I grew up on a farm. Mm. I grew up. My dad was a farmer, um, and I remember driving with my mum one day, and driving down that lane, and looking down into the field where the sheep were, and and the sheep were all cornered into a, a huddle in the corner yeah. of the field. Sure. And I realised that two dogs had come to attack the sheep, and they had cornered all of the sheep in the field. And what they did was they isolated one of the sheep. One of the sheep decided to leave the pack. There was strength when they were together. One of them decided to run away and yeah. got itself stuck in the wire and they attacked the sheep wow. uh, to the point of where the sheep almost died, but the sheep ultimately recovered. Wow. Um, but it, again, it, it's such a practical, practical thing. There, there is a strength, not, don't get me wrong. And you can be, you can be completely alone in a crowd, mm. but there is a, there is a strength in finding a brother or brothers or finding a sister and sisters um, and, and, and someone who can be a friend, who can be a companion that will walk with you and who will who will bear with you in your in your troubles and your sorrows. Yeah. Um, that that's part of who we are. We're, we're made to be relational people, you know. Um, yeah. and, uh, just one other thing I would throw into that. Sure. You said something about there's days when you don't feel like it. Those days are the days that you push through, especially. That's right. Because emotions are great servants but bad mm. masters oh yeah 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 so we're made to show emotion that's who we are we're made we're created we're designed to have emotion yeah they're great servants in other words they serve the needs of expressing how i care if i told my wife in a really deadpan non-expressionist you know that i love her you know you know and there was no life to what i said whereas if i if i embrace her and i hold her and i look at her and i and I, and I tell her with all that I have with me, I love you. I show emotion. Yeah. Uh, it, it just endorses what I'm saying. Mm. But emotions are great servants, but bad masters. There'll be days where even your emotions will, will deceive you. And yeah. there'll be days where you will not feel like it. There'll mm. be days where you will want to give up. There'll be days where you want to pull back. There'll yeah. be days where you want to sit back down again. There'll be days when the altar call comes or the, you know, that where there's a response that the Holy Spirit is trying to bring about in your life. Yeah. There'll be a point and you go, nah, I, I don't feel it today. I don't feel like it. Yeah. Listen for the voice of God. He is greater than your emotions. That's right. He's greater even than what you think of him or mm. what you can quantify of who he is. So always remember that um, they're great servants, but poor masters. Yeah. So press on. Mm. Amen. Do you know, Pastor Barry, I have loved talking with you. This is This is the longest conversation we've had. Yeah, probably. And yeah, I, I've really enjoyed it. I've I've enjoyed yeah. hearing your heart for this topic, for how how you are dealing with this topic head on, not only in your personal life but also as a pastor in your ministry life as well. Um, you've you have been 
uh, biblical with your response. You have been educational, but you've also been very practical, which is quite important for a topic as such as this. And I feel yeah. it's only fitting if I could kindly ask you, would you pray as a way to close out this podcast episode for people listening, for people dealing with maybe their mental health at the moment is not so good. Would you pray for them? Is that cool? Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you too, Jerry. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. Um, Father, we, we just come before you this day, Father, and we, we, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, um, to, to be honest uh, mm. and to be open, Lord. Uh, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to, to speak, Lord, even through Lord the medium, Lord, of this podcast, Lord, uh, to reach, Lord, beyond, Lord, the boundaries of our walls, Lord, and to reach mm. out into a world, Lord, that needs you, Jesus. Yes. Uh, so, Father, in this place today, Lord, I pray for everyone, Lord, in the sound of our voices, Lord, within that reach, Lord. I pray, Lord, for everyone who will hear these words, Lord. I pray for everyone who is listening, or Lord, will, Lord, even those that are, are struggling, Lord, or wrestling, Lord, with their, their mental health, Lord. Mm. Lord, we realize, Lord, we have, we've barely scratched the surface, Lord, even in our discussing today, Lord. But, Lord, your word tells us that you know us, Lord, yeah. that you knit us together, Lord, in our mother's womb, Lord. You know, Lord, the most intimate, Lord, most intricate details of our lives, Lord. And, Lord God, we, Lord, we are, we think that we are aware, Lord, and yet, Lord, you know us, Lord, altogether better, Lord. Yeah. And so, Father, Lord, this day, I pray for every person, Lord God, Lord, that will hear this, that, Lord God, they will find rest, Lord. They will find peace, Lord. They will find joy, Lord, and all of those things they will find in Jesus. I thank you that, Lord, those answers are not to be found in, in substances, Lord. They're not to be found, Lord, in, in drugs or alcohol, Lord. They're not to be found even in a relationship, Lord. Yeah. But, Lord, they're only to be found truly, Lord, in you, Jesus. Thank you for good friends, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for Lord for all of the, the ways, Lord God, that, Lord, are there to help us. But, Lord, thank you most of all for Jesus. Yeah. Thank you that, Lord God, we have this great hope we have this great message lord to share this great message of the gospel that we are not on our own lord even as the psalmist says lord that lord god lord lord even lord in the presence of our enemies lord that you prepare us the table for us lord even should that enemy lord come against us lord even there lord you prepare us the table lord and lord we thank you for this place thank you for jerry here lord thank you lord god for the heart you've given him lord to to reach out to god Lord, he's not sitting behind closed doors, Lord, just getting on with life. But thank you for the desire he has to reach, Lord, Lord, his peers, Lord, and to reach, Lord, people, Lord, right across the spectrum, Lord, of, of this land, oh God, and beyond, Lord. So, Lord, we pray your blessing upon him, Lord, in the days to come too, Lord. Amen. Thank you for this place, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, that's it for another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast. Do us a favor. Why not give it a like, share, subscribe it with a family member, friend, colleague, neighbor, someone who you may feel may benefit particularly from this podcast episode so that it can help them in their daily life to walk knowing the reality of Jesus walking with them through the reality of the complexities of the mental health issues that we all deal with from time to time. And tune in next week for another episode. Take care. God bless. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast. Did you enjoy the episode? Maybe did it encourage you or motivate you? Do you think that someone in your life could benefit or be blessed by this episode? If so, then why not send it to them? Lastly, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you use. This massively helps to spread the podcast literally all across the world. And don't forget the hope is to life as often is to the body. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Take care.